How's it going guys? So, today is going to be a different mobile how-to video. I've done an unboxing of one water cooling unit on this channel so far, and I figured it'd probably be a pretty good idea to show you how to go about installing an aftermarket heatsink if you uh, wanted to do that. Most aftermarket heat sinks are pretty similar, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and, well, go through how to install it. Um, the first step that I'd like to do, if you're going to use a table to put your case up on and stuff like that, I'd like to just get a towel, throw that down on the table, try to prevent any, try to prevent any scratching when you drop your giant computer case up on, on a table. Now, don't mind the dust, there's a lot of it. So, the next step is we're just going to go ahead and open the case up. And, uh, we'll take a peek inside. This, this computer is relatively um, new, and um, let's just get it all up in here real quick. So as you can see, it's a little dusty. That's pretty standard. But first what we're gonna do is we're actually just going to go ahead and take the motherboard out of this case, everything out, get this old heat sink off, and then from there we can install the new one. All right? So let's watch this little time lapse and see how we do. When you're taking out a PCI Express bus, usually you'll have uh, a few little tabs on the inside, and you can actually see one of the ones in the open slot here, these little guys here. You want to make sure that you're very careful when extracting your graphics card that you sort of reach down in there and push that tab. Some of them are slide tabs. These are just sort of a push tab. And make sure that you slide that graphics card out easily. So now that we've uninstalled all of the screws and whatnot, it's time to actually pull the motherboard. So typically you should be able to just slide the motherboard a little bit back and then uh, lift out, being careful to leave all your cables intact. In my case, I'm basically leaving all of my cables where they are since it's already mapped out to where the motherboard goes. So we're just gonna lift this out slowly and carefully, getting all those cables out of the way. So there we are. Look at this giant heat sink on this thing. So now we've got our motherboard here with that old heat sink on there. And you can see that heat sink takes up a whole lot of space. So with this particular heat sink design, the first thing we need to do is we need to disconnect these clips that hold this fan in. Pardon the dust. And then we'll just sort of apply light pressure and wedge the fan out. Ew. Look at that dust. Gross. Anyway, so once we've wedged the fan out here, we'll uh, put that off to the side so you don't have to look at it. There are, there are two screws that hold the actual heat sink down inside the, uh, or onto the bracketing. So I've got this nice long screwdriver bit specifically for this purpose, actually. So we'll go ahead and just take that off. And then our heat sink should just, with a little twist and lifting carefully, should be able to just pop that right off. Aside from the dust bunnies, we can see that the processor looks pretty good. And uh, the guy who put on the uh, thermal paste last time did a good job. That, that was me. I also, I, I did that. So, basically, in this particular part, we're just stripping down the old bracketing. If you have a stock heatsink on an AMD processor, AM3 or AM3+, Plus, uh, this is going to be a big 
usually black plastic bracket that comes around here. You're just going to take the four screws out and then pull the back plate off. So there should be a back plate on the back of here, very similar to this. In my case, I already have an aftermarket one. So I'm just simply pulling these little rubber donuts off of mine. So there we are. So what you'll probably want to do at this point is take your motherboard outside and blow all the dust off so the people watching your video don't think you're a slob. Now that your motherboard is essentially free of dust, you'll just want to get the excess thermal paste from the last processor that was on here off. Typically I just use a paper towel. If it's really stuck on there you might use uh, a tiny bit of say like isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol just on the top. You want to be careful not to get it anywhere else. Um, thermal paste typically tends to be pretty highly conductive, so if you get it stuck in any of the uh, circuitry, you do risk having problems there. So there we are. Ooh, nice and clean. Typically, your new heatsink will come with some hardware and some instructions. You certainly want to work on reading through those instructions and following, but uh, typically it'll come with a back plate like this. In our case, we're going to be using these four holes for the AMD socket, so around this edge. So what you want to do is look at your bag. In this case, the bag is clearly marked wrong because looking at you, deep cool, because these are the four standoffs that we're going to need, and they're in the Intel box. So go figure. So what you're going to want to do first is basically assemble what you need onto your back plate. So typically that's going to be the standoffs that go through your motherboard. In this case with the deep cool product, we're basically just inserting these these bolts into holes in the back. So they just kind of press in to these hex holes just with a little bit of persuasion like that. So we just do that for each one of these like that. And then we'll take the motherboard and position the back plate underneath it. So we'll just slide that through just like that. So typically with these type of uh, aftermarket heatsink installations, you're going to be getting some bolts or some, in my case, with the previous uh, heatsink I had, some, some sort of thumb uh, or rubber, rubber washers. But basically those are going to go down here and just sort of hold your heatsink onto the motherboard. In this case I have actually this one side as you can see here has a sort of paper washer on it and the other side is wood or is uh, shiny metal. You want the paper washer side down so that we don't damage the uh, circuit board. And you want to just get those finger tight. You don't want to get them too terribly tight but you want to make sure that the spacers are on there. So we'll just do that for the rest of these. like that. And then we're ready to slide on our spacers. So in this particular installation, AMD has given us a couple of spacers. And if you look at your instructions, you'll see that uh, essentially what you're going to want to do is point these threaded holes towards the inner towards the inner um, inner side, I guess you'd say. Uh, so, we'll put these on here like that. like that. And then, we have uh, some bolts, or some washers, nuts I guess you'd say, that'll hold those in place. And these go right down on top. So far, the promise of a toolless installation from Deepcool is uh, going along alright. So there we've got our bracketing on. Now what we're going to do is actually go get the unit and bolt that onto the top of that. So, I know I said earlier that we were going to go ahead and bolt this on, and we certainly could, but it'd be a lot easier to do it while it's in the case. Well, in a certain sense. This, this particular cooler actually has some uh, heat sink paste, or thermal paste built in, or put on already, and I'm going to go ahead and use that. But uh, you're certainly welcome to just 
put a little grain of rice size thermal paste directly on the die and then put your heat sink on top. Typically I just let it uh, level itself out underneath the cooler and a lot of people will probably scream, no Justin, that's a terrible idea. I don't care. It's, it's worked for me for years. So whatever works for you is fine, but that's how I do it. So next we're going to actually bring the case back up and pop this in. So since these, uh, since this particular liquid cooler requires so much effort to uh, situate, I'm going to go ahead and put the motherboard back into the case. What we're going to want to do is remove one of these fans on the back because they're in the way and we need the space for the radiator. I'm choosing this fan because it has a little bit more room around it. And the radiator is actually going to take up a bit of space. Looks like it's not really going to fit there. So we may have to just get a little creative. And I may just end up mounting this on the top of my case for testing. So if we take a look here, you can see that these two holes here just bolt, bolt up with this right here. So we can pretty much just sort of wrestle this in here and bolt it down. I'm going to actually just go ahead and bolt my radiator to the top of the case rather than what I originally thought um, was going to be in the back because there's just not a lot of room. So we'll go ahead and just cross your hands up a lot doing this. So we'll go ahead and bolt this in place here, and then I'll go ahead and locate my radiator back here in the back. So I'll go ahead and flop that down and get the tubes out of the way so I can then bolt it in place. The biggest thing that you have to look out for with these, uh, these water cooling products is that they give you extra cabling, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, except for when your case is sort of got very limited room on where you can install these so your your tubes tend to get a little bit tight so we're gonna go ahead and bolt this down these you'll actually want to get nice and tight so that they get on the motherboard you'll also want to make sure to check around the cabling and make sure that there's nothing no cables getting pinched and uh, nothing in the way, such as actual like uh, transistors on your motherboard or other capacitors, etc. So once we're done with actually locking this in place, we're just going to find a three-pin power connector for the actual uh, pump. And in, in my case, I've got one sort of just right over, right over here just out of range. So we've got that in, it's nice and tight. The tubes are going. I'm just gonna bolt my bolt my radiator in to the top of the case. Right over here. Like that. And attach a fan and then uh, we'll be done. So really the most important thing to note is that you know you just want to make sure that you get all the bracketing on and get all of that done before you have the motherboard in the case <laughs> and then you can easily bolt this on once it's in the case. Now some fans typically I recommend for big heat sinks like the one I pulled out I recommend that you actually just do the whole thing outside the case. This is a little bit more difficult because we have these tubes in the way and we also have the radiator that we have to figure out where to put. So this is a little bit of a different case but uh, a different case in your case. Haha. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was terrible. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt this radiator on, bolt the fan on, and uh, that'll be about it for the video. So thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, let me know, comment section below. If you think it was terrible, you can certainly tell me that too. Um, and uh, stick around for when I give you my final thoughts on the Deep Cool 120EX Captain. And uh, 
I will also be giving this away in the future. So stick around for that third video. That third video will be when I uh, tell you how to how to get sent home this and uh, get this sent to your house, if you will. And uh, thanks for watching.